In this lesson, we're going to take a tour of IntelliJ. So if you've never used IntelliJ, this is a really good starting point. We're going to kind of walk around the IDE. I'm going to show you a few features and hopefully get you a little bit more familiar with the tool. So here we are. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you normally just fire up IntelliJ, it's going to take you into the last project that you were working on. In my case, I opened it and I went to File and Close Projects so I could show you this screen. So from here, we can do the normal things that we would normally want to do when starting the IDE, which is either create a project, import, open, or check out from version control. But what we can also do is get a list of all of our recent projects that we've worked on. In my case, I only have that one project, so it's here. And if I go ahead and click on it, it will bring me into the IDE. So next, let's go ahead and take a look at our project structure. So here on the left, we have a structure of our project. Here on the right, we have our code editor. And we have some tips here when we don't have anything open. So first, there is a search everywhere. So in our case, in Mac, it's double tap shift. And we can actually start to search across our projects for any files. If we wanted to go to a file, recent files, open this navigation bar, or just drop files in here to open them. You could also go ahead and click on a file on the left and that will open them in the right. So we'll come back to this in a second, but I do want to show you this. So first off in here, we in under IntelliJ, we have preferences. And this is where you're going to do a lot of changing to kind of fit your needs, whether it be how it looks or different key bindings or how the editor plays out or font sizes or themes, adding plugins, etc. So we're actually going to go over uh, some of this in this section, but we'll just kind of skip that for now. But I just wanted to show you where that was. So we'll click OK there. Also, if you're on a project and you go to File, project structure, or you can see command semicolon, or there's this little icon over here that'll get you to that same place. So one of the things you can do right in the project structure is it, it has a bunch of different settings particular to this project. And in this case, we have a project SDK for 1.8 and a language level of Java 8. So this is important. If you're working on, say, let, let's say this is a Java 9 project, you would change the SDK and you would change the language level because if the language level doesn't match the version of the SDK you're using, when you're trying to use those features from that particular version, the editor is going to complain and say, I don't know what you're trying to use there because it, it doesn't know what language you're trying to use. So make sure these match up and normally when you create a new project and give it an SDK, this will be set correctly. So that's that. Again, we have our navigation here on the left. We have our code editor here on the right. And the nice thing about using a code editor is we get some really nice features here. So right out of the box, we get IntelliSense and code completion. So as we start to type, you can see that there's a list of what the editor thinks that you're trying to look for. So when I started typing S, it says, all right, maybe you want a string. And then when I hit a Y, it goes, well, you probably don't want a string. Maybe you want system. So if I want code completion, I just hit enter on that. And then I hit a dot. And now it's going to look in that system class and take a look at all the methods that I might, I might want to call. So maybe I wanted to call out. And then I hit a dot again, and now it knows that there's more methods. So as I start to type, you'll see that my options kind of get narrowed down. And again, this is where using an IDE really helps out. So we can type in hello world and save this. So something else a, an IDE can help us with is kind of show us some errors. So let's say in this print line, I wanted to print a variable. Maybe we had a variable called hello message. But right away, when I kind of save this, I get an error here. And it's like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. What is this uh, hello message that you're trying to create? So that's just giving us some insight into our application to say that I don't know what that is. So now if we go ahead and complete this, now that error goes away. 
So something else that we can get, uh, we can get some code completion. So let's say we created a new class here and we'll call this developer. And inside of developer, I'm gonna create a few fields. So we'll say private string first name, private string last name, and we'll look for a GitHub account for that developer. So now with Java, one of the things that, you know, people often complain about Java is some of the verbosity that, that comes with it. Well, you don't have to write all of that out, which is nice. Um, we can come in here and actually generate that out. So in a normal Pojo class, which this is, you would have a bunch of getters and setters. Now you could just generate getters, just generate, generate setters, or you can generate both. So in this list, I'm just gonna select which fields I want as the getters and setters to generate, and I'll hit enter, and now I have all of those completed. Likewise, again, I'm hitting command N here, or you can actually right click in here, and I think you can go to generate, yeah, so generate. So then we can also do, say, an equals and hash code. And that'll give us some more code here. And if we wanted a two string for this class, there's our two string. Maybe we also wanted a constructor here. And that's gonna take in a first name, last name, and GitHub account. So IntelliJ is going to help us with some of the code generation that we need to kind of get our boilerplate code up and running. Now, if you don't know what this class is, don't worry about that. I think the, the main point of this is IntelliJ kind of helping with some of the heavy lifting here. So that's that. Let's move on to, so we have code generation done, and then we can also create methods for us. So let's use that developer class. So let's say developer, developer is equal to new developer. And that actually takes a first name, a last name, and a GitHub account, which is, what we could do is we can say developer.print full name. So we're calling a method here, and you can see by the error there, if we hover over that, oh, I don't know what print full name is. I don't think we have a method on that class to print full name. Well, if we go option or alt and enter, we get some helper methods, and one of the things that IntelliJ is going to come up with an idea for us to do is create an actual method called print full name. So now it's actually created a method called print full name. Again, it doesn't do much, but at least it, it created that method for us. And then we can come in here and go system dot out. And I'll show you a little sneak peek of something, but you can do a little shortcut to get to there. And we would say, Actually, we'll just print out like uh, first name is and first name. Or you could just print out, let's just do this. So we'll do that plus that plus that. All right, so that would give us what we need there. So that's a little bit about the code generation that IntelliJ can really help us with. So then we have uh, toolbars. So let's go to view and let's go to toolbar and view and tool buttons. So these are just some more, we got a bunch of toolbar buttons up here that we can use and we have buttons along the left, the bottom and the right, depending on what we are doing. So here in our project, if we go back to our developer class, this is our navigation of our project. But we can also go into structure. So now a structure is basically telling us what this class looks like. So if you had a class with a ton of properties and a ton of methods, it'd be easily uh, easy to jump between them using the structure instead of trying to hunt through code. So if I ask myself, where is that hash code? Oh, there it is, and it jumps right to it for me. So that's what structure is. Then down here, we have a terminal, so this terminal basically gives us the terminal that we need right here on the Mac. And so if we're looking in our main class right here, so if we do an ls and we cd into source, and there's our developer.java, if we wanna do, we could easily just say, all right, uh, let's go ahead and compile developer.java. And there's, should be, 
and there's the class file. So again, we don't have to manually compile that stuff now. The IDE does that for us, again, which is really nice. So just getting back to that, now that we've compiled that, let's go ahead and delete that. We don't want that there. We want the IDE to go ahead and compile it for us and then run it using that out directory. So we're just going to go ahead and run our main class here. I'm going to go to run. And first it typed out hello world, and then it printed our full name of our developer using that print method that we created in our developer class. So I think that's about it. I just wanted to give you a quick tour of what IntelliJ looks like and some of the different things that you can do inside of there. We're going to continue that through this section. I'm going to show you how to like set up some different themes, some different plugins that I use. We'll talk a little bit more about code formatting and code generation, some templating, which is really cool stuff. You kind of saw a little sneak peek of that with that S out. And we'll get into debugging and source control. So all kinds of fun in this section. I hope this was a good intro for you though, and let's go ahead and move on.